Welcome back, everybody. We are here at the LCK for the second matchup of the night. It's going to be Sandbox Gaming, backed by their new coach, Shimada, who made it out of quarantine and has since led the team to a couple of wins in a row, up against KT Rolster, who have moved Smeb down into the support role uh, out of necessity, of course, because Tucson, unfortunately, is still dealing with some health issues at the moment, but it's been working out as they did take out, of course, DRX just the other day. What was that? Yep, that was just the other day. And uh, it's very interesting to see that uh, that can happen. And we'll see if they can roll that into more wins up against Sandbox or what exactly is going to happen in this matchup wrote uh, R5 Renekton <laughs> on uh, yeah, I, I've team. already got it down there. Just, uh, you know. You sick? I'm well, trying to <laughs> trying to fun. see the future and maybe, like, acknowledge that I already saw that future and maybe change the future through that way. I don't know how they let you in, but <laughs> we're going to go to the points of the match in just a second. And KT, it's going to be interesting to see what they managed to do. Is Smeb and so on both gonna be starting here yet again today? As two teams who are getting hot face each other, Sandbox with two straight wins after five straight losses versus KT, who pull out the biggest upset thus far of the split. And obviously that's referring to the upset versus DRX. This is Yamato Cannon's Magic Sandbox aiming for three straight wins. How far will they continue their winning streak 2020 Rookie of the Year support with a thousand kills. Smeb <laughs> will he go up against his former teammate, Gorilla, and then Smeb's Maokai for the entire series was the cornerstone of their win versus Dragon X. What has Sandbox planned to negate it? And the, the scary thing is that, given that it's two top laners, the champions that can appear in bottom lane are gonna be very different compared to traditional supports that aren't named Lahens and Karia. Yeah. So there's a lot of power there. <laughs> And this has been something that I've talked about for so long, in that mid laners and top laners can just pivot to support, whereas the same isn't as easily said. On the flip side, team stats here. Sandbox does have a bit of difficulty. However, when they have a win rate, their win rate with the gold lead at 15 is 83%. It's pretty good. I mean, they've only dropped one game after having a little lead and Again, it doesn't say how wide the lead was. Could have been, you know, what, a thousand gold? That doesn't necessarily mean too much, depending on the compositions and all of that. You can see the average Baron power play actually quite large for Sandbox. They're second in the league. I think that's part of the reason why they pull out that stat there. One of the only good ones for the side of Sandbox so far. And they've been having only good ones for a couple in a row. So that is certainly uh, what they're going to be looking to extend today. Another big change that they brought in is Fate into the mid lane. He has been looking just cleaner, I guess, mechanically. I feel like he has been performing well, and so they haven't had really any reason to take him out of the lineup and put Dove back in. And now the big reveal. Here we go. <laughs> going to be Smeb in top lane and support. Bono in jungle. UCAL in mid lane, and then aiming as the marksman player, joined by Soan in support in top lane. Yes, <laughs> and uh, I'm glad you put it that way because literally, I you know, we didn't see it against DRX, but why not just pick a couple of flex picks that can go pretty much anywhere and then see, you know, who wants to play it and what position and who's feeling more comfortable. We're gonna take a look here at some of the key players on fleek versus Bono. On Fleek, the first place in kill participation out of any jungler in the LCK. That's one of the stats that he does have going for him, but he's relatively passive in terms of invading, whereas Bono is very much in your face from the get-go. First blood percentage through the roof. Yep. First place right now, nearly 69%, and is looking to increase that even today. Yeah, and so, Let's take a look at what is going to end up happening between these two players. Bono has really been turning a new leaf here so far in summer. And 
it, it's going to be interesting to see what he can manage to do here today. The other thing is the big wild card is Summit. Which one shows up? Yeah. Either Summit or Plummet is the big huh? question up there in top lane. Bottle looks very focused, well rested, he's ready to go. Looks pretty happy today. What if he's not well rested? I don't know, I'm just saying the way he looks, you know? Okay. Just uh, trying to garner whatever kind of information that I can. The heat packs always just completely befuddle me. Is it cold on the stage? You know, we've been having like a little bit of an air conditioner issue. Really? Here, I don't know why. Okay. But backstage, it was pretty freezing for like the last couple of days. I don't know if you noticed. Maybe that same thing is happening down on stage. It's possible. All this, I go from two places. The desk <laughs> to the talent room. Yeah, that's true. Okay. And sometimes out My to cave. get some food. Yeah. Yeah. Your cave where you sit in the death realm and... Uh... I turn off the lights in there. Yeah. My eyes, yeah. Yeah. You got to rest them. Others walk in and they're like... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Voldemort, you okay? <laughs> like, <laughs> you lock it down, you know. It's your, it's your realm. Yeah. In there, nobody can just enter oh. willy nilly. The air conditioning problem. It's not really a problem for me. Always a big fan of freezing. Yes. So. Very true. We're I'm trying, trying, to, I'm just... trying to just give some hints. Actually. <laughs> so it was you. <laughs> You're the one who's bringing yeah. down the temperature here in Lull Park. It was me all along. Makes sense. At the end of the day. Well, things are getting pretty icy. I wish. <laughs> I wish, you know. Yeah. Well, All right. If only we had an LCK winter still, then maybe Ooh. we'd have a better chance. I'd solo cast that. Yeah. <laughs> you don't need anyone else. You could just talk like a monologue about freezing <laughs> for like 30 minutes straight. The whole <laughs> the whole map is just everybody trying to freeze on each other. Oh, that sounds fun. <laughs> All right. Well, seems like we're taking a little bit to get into the game here. Yeah. And I'm curious what the draft approaches are going to be out of these two teams. I am so sad that we, no one else is practicing Nunu. Yeah, I don't know. Bunch of sinners, you know, deplorable, honestly. He, he can be flexed too, right? You can he can, play him yeah. Mid, he, he can jungle. play him mid jungle. Top? Maybe. Top is, top is less effective, but yes, you could. Mm -hmm. And then support. Wow. He can go support. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And even AD if you have a Senna, I guess, but. Nunu does it all. <laughs> five man flex, <laughs> five position flex. <laughs> Someday, maybe an LCK winter. Well, we're here in the draft. Callista, Senna, the aforementioned. And the Olaf first ban against Sandbox is very interesting. They do not want to deal with On Fleek's Olaf. And they do not want to deal with Karma. And Senna getting banned away along with Callista. I guess it's them saying that they want Aphilios. And Varus gets banned. So this is basically what is accomplished here in that you can go for... All right, they're not going to go for Aphilios. They're going to go for Twisted Fate. And now this is interesting because if KT R1's Aphilios, then Sandbox can respond B2 with Ezreal. And that would set up very nicely Twisted Fate and Ezreal, two champions that are very good against Aphilios. Yeah. And so, no, uh, KT's not going to, to take that line. I wish they had. All right, well. <laughs> Trapdol. Trapdol. <laughs> He's in back. Here. Look at his face. He's just so happy. And Aphilios is going to be locked in here into the Ezreal Trundle with Nautilus, his best buddy, definitely his most common lane partner. And we'll see what else ends up happening. KT could just select their mid laner right now if they wanted to. Okay, it's gonna be Orianna. Huh. Orianna very good against Aphilios. You have other options like Azir could also come in against Twisted Fate, say, Somewhat rough matchup. You and know so a great ball carrier is um, Renekton. <laughs> Remember the R5 Renekton? <gasps> they banned it! Thank God. At least, you know. 
Yeah, and you know, I, I completely agree with you. Renekton is actually a really good ball carrier. What you're gonna want to do is you want to take you want to take a uh, cruise ship right over to the Pacific, okay, right above the Mariana Trench. Yeah. And you're gonna want to tie some uh, very heavy chain balls to his ankles. And Whoa. Just <laughs> drop him right in. Monkey. Maybe he'll come back as a Godzilla skin one day. Who knows? Yeah, he'll you know he'll come out Up of the water. Balls. Yeah. <laughs> Attack a city. That's uh, that's what Renekton's all about. We're also going to take another Sinner, Lee Sinner, this time around. So not Renekson. That was taken before. All right, well, KT are panning the Sinners so that we don't have to worry about them picking it. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Who's in charge of the ban card here? Smeb, right? Smeb, <laughs> he's like they didn't ban Maokai. <laughs> ah, lol. <laughs> well, Maokai picked up now. And that's a good ball carrier because of the twisting advance. He also scales pretty well just in terms of his utility and what he can offer his teammates. Very good disruption. And so KT, I mean, as it stands right now, even though they have the Trundle and the Maokai, which do go into their opponents, they also have Ezreal and Orianna. And Ezreal and Orianna are very good against TF and Aphelios. Camille now getting picked up in blind, actually, because Maokai yeah. can just go bottom, and now Volibear getting picked up blind. So, this is where you can just, you, alright, so, they won't, but you could slam R5 Gangplank, and things get a little bit unfortunate for the opponents. Another good champion here is actually Urgot. I don't know how much either of them have been playing it. Jack's really good, Volibear can't play the game, Ooh. neither can Camille. Gets out scaled and KT Ooh. smacking them here. KT have so much better team fighting. Their lanes are all advantageous. Their champions all scale better. Wow. And so a bit of a decimation here in terms of how much easier it is for KT to do so many different things in the game and the luxuries granted to them by not just the laning phase, but also the champions' interactions with one another versus the opponents. The tools that they have, the insurance policy with the scaling, the ability to deny the split push and everything else that Sandbox had a 1-3-1 option, but Jax is gonna shut that up real quick. Yeah, that's a really interesting last pick. Um, we've seen a lot of questionable R5s in our time. Oh, this one's good. This one is actually great. This one is legitimately <laughs> very good. It's nice. Feels good. It's and so, yeah. Sandbox are going to have to play so much better than KT in order to win this. They are really trying to trying to summit a mountain. And so was someone on the stage as well. I this just happened heard someone twice play. now. It happened yesterday. I don't know. Someone with a battle cry. Yeah, someone. <laughs> someone saw Renekton get locked in. Oh, man. When the when the league fighting game comes out, we need to just play each other. We'll all play Atrox, and you play Renekton. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I'll just play Lee Sin uh, every time. It's never ending sin. Well, guys, we're ready to jump into game one. Here we are, match 36. We're almost near the halfway point. We got nine matches, I guess, yeah. left available until that moment. So it's going to be Corrupting Potion Start. For so on up in top lane. And we'll see what Sandbox can manage to do. Trundle is the most out of place champion in KT's entire draft. And if KT try to do the DRX in that they just try to run into Aphilios and Volibear and friends, then 200 years can definitely come online. We take a look at all the runes everywhere. No real sinful runes coming out anywhere. <laughs> no Scorch, so I think we're safe. It's a lot of Nimbus Cloak. Yeah. Only Oriana doesn't take it. Everybody else will. And you Just, to go cleanse too. He wants to make sure. Yeah, it's a little surprising Oriana didn't take it because he, he has Spellbook. How, how, how do you feel about this Oriana skin? Um, it makes me think of, did you play the new Pokemon? 
Bel Bel Bellony? B Bellani? Okay. I, I did I not play know. the new Pokemon. Okay, well, chat is cultured on, like... Bellani? 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 Yeah, whatever city it is. <laughs> it looks like the, the Pokemon trainer. Okay. Uh, it kind of reminds me of, like, Super Mario Sh Sunshine for some reason. It's an uh, interesting skin. Well, someone is actually getting just kind of poked out here early on. It's uh, a little bit annoying. Yukal seemingly do a, doing a good job there. In mid. By the way, I was uh, I was let know if you want to vote for Smed, but you got to vote for top lane because he's in the r the card as a top lane, even though he plays support every game. <laughs> Yeah. Who said that? Why? I don't know. It's just the way it is. Maybe it, because they have like a roster card, and I guess like okay. he comes up as the uh, the mid lane on the card as So on. He's gonna come up big here with some damage. And So on's just looking to try to get a crash in on wave four. Jax actually benefits from it a lot. If he can get that recall off. He is missing a bit of CS though, so he's not actually going to have the gold to get the max value recall. He missed four in the first three waves. He also pushed that last wave a little bit quickly. I can't quite see it on the minimap, but there is a world where he just hard shoves in wave four and recalls. Consider the series as the last one before the Armageddon. Okay. If we're heading to the stadium with the losing mentality, we might as well just forfeit the series. Our goal, though, isn't about getting the W, it's about learning and development processes. So I guess that winning mentality is more like um, if you're not here to learn and get better, then, yeah. you know, whatever. Just don't even bother. So that is the hardcore nature of Coach Hirai, of course, here for KT. And so we'll see what KT are gonna do so far in this game. Everything is just very slow and steady. And Soan did get off a, well, I, I, I hate to call it a cheat. Honestly, it looks like a scam recall. He recalled with 17 out of 25. Was so, he at 15 before the last week? He then, definitely was. <laughs> so. And uh, he missed four, I guess, because it wasn't a cannon wave. This uh, <laughs> definitely not ideal. So. Missing the kind of gold that he would like on that recall ends up picking up a Doron's Blade. So Soan doing a little bit rough here against Summit. Now see, this is the benefits though of a cheater. So the wave's coming into him, he can threaten to freeze, and you can steal away Summit's teleport, and then you get to teleport after Summit and come back with even more battle stats. So it's a constant layering process. We talked about this in the former series where Varus could have done it to an Aphilios and didn't. And another aspect of sometimes why you want to do stuff like this is if you can stifle the opponent's build. Now, Jax just lets the wave in completely, so I guess it's a moot point, but <laughs> sometimes yeah. these are very nice ways that you can really turn the tides inside of certain lanes and make it very painful for the opponent to play without jungler assistance. But it, what it seems like is everyone right now is just very content on playing a very standard, honest, no-trade laning phase. This happens a lot in LCK. Not as much as in Spring, though. Do you remember Spring? There were so many... I don't want to. <laughs> you a point. Because of what you were about to say. There were so many near-perfect games, and there were so many pentakills. That's true. And Oh, man. But there were also a lot of kind of boring, very laid back laning phases where nobody was really trying to push an advantage. It was more so just like, let me, you know, try to be clean. Bono's gonna take first dragon here, it looks like. Polar Bear, nowhere to be seen. And it does look like the bottom lane is gonna push in and help him out. The uh, Root actually going for a call. So, yeah. yeah, just really trying to get whatever little advantage he can. And we'll see what ends up happening. Root is going to shove in that wave, and he's going to get the recall off. It's pretty hard for Ezreal to respond here. And we can just see on Fleek. I mean, he's trying to get level 6, and then they will turret dive. This is going to give it to us. I mean, they have the ability to threaten to. 
And with Twisted Fate, Destiny Gate, there's a lot of plays they can make, but you do have to respect Jack's Counter Strike. Yeah. And honestly, Summit is doing such a phenomenal job in this matchup. Also, Grasp, I'm curious how many procs he has at this stage of the game. It would be cool to know. I, I saw him walking forward a bunch, trying to proc it. And even though that early game was looking not so great for Sohan, where he was missing a lot of CS, he has been able to slightly catch up here. He's not too far behind. And Camille did go for double Dorans as well, so they're both going to take the one extra Dorans to start here. And we're all just kind of hanging out. Nobody's really going for any big plays. Bono was angling up towards top side with, you know, TF and on fleek. Yeah, and every Summit, the potential dive and stuff. Everything just going super slow at, at this point in, 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 in the game is beneficial for KT because they're the ones that are scaling better. And a lot of this is just a byproduct because the laners aren't interacting with their jungler. And this happens a lot in LCK. Some games we get Dom Juan just completely pile driving their opponents. Yeah. And it feels like they're always on top of things. Sometimes it happens with DRX. But a lot of that, if you go into the context of those games, is often at the mistakes of the opponents. And here we go. So right now, Fate, he has the wave being pulled into him. He could just hold it. There's no reason to immediately shove it back out because the next wave is coming. And b before Camille would even go back up into top lane, you have Bully Bear going over to blue. TFD, he, he doesn't have a hot date that he has to get to. Could have just maintained a little bit of lane control. It was a nice roam down attempt by Summit, though, to look for some something. Yeah. He's seemingly the only person that's looking for some kind of proactive gank potential. Uh, the two junglers are, are farming to their heart's content. Sitting back. On Fleek did a nice amount of early counter jungling, which is, as we mentioned earlier, not something that he always does. So we're going to mix it up a little bit into the trundle. And now I think the next focus is just going to be this Rift Herald. We see that Bono is slowly making his way over. And there were a lot of pings on it from the blue team from Sandbox. But now with Smeb coming on up, looks like they're going to try to force the issue. KT will. Nice trade Ooh. coming in here from Soan. Yeah, Conqueror did get fully stacked. Here's Destiny Gate. Flash comes out. Fade has Flash too, but... Okay, that's not going to oh. end up doing much. They get the Flash out of Gorilla here. They're going to try to burst him down. It's down he oh. will go. First blood goes to Orianna, actually. Thought that would be the Ezreal, but in comes Soan. And now on Fleek is on the run. Oh. Galloping on over, but they can't actually yeah. take the kill. And now aiming is mid, and Root is just getting so much free farm down yeah. bot. Aiming came all the way from downtown. And I mean, they're going to end up getting the Rift Herald. They do end up winning the team fight, but Aphilios is just getting so much value. He's going to have the call completed very soon. Twisted Fate dying, though, is actually a really big deal for him. He ideally would have liked to have Rod of Ages on his next recall that should have been happening very soon, but getting stunted like this, not ideal. Yukal now ahead of him in EXP. Bono gonna actually pick up the Rift Herald. Also, Bono is down two levels. I just wanna point that out. He did just ding seven. So he's down a little bit over a level. As Let's take a look at how this all transpires. And so Gorilla goes for the Shockwave, or Yukal goes for the Shockwave. Gorilla flashes out all onto Bono. Smep with a really good twisting advance, but Maokai does go down. And so on, does get the kill. And right there, aiming just doesn't really have the damage. He doesn't even go up for the two minions, just let them actually both die. So, a bit of a blunder there. KT coaches a little bit relieved with the transgressions that have happened thus far. Three seconds until the ocean. And this is a really good timing. Someone could actually just run down. This is, I wish I had Epic Pen. He could just run down to the dragon because you want to initiate lane swap immediately thereafter. And you get the dragon and Twisted Fate is stuck because he wants Rod of Ages, but he can't get it. And then all that ends up happening is you have aiming, have teleport. He can TP up into top lane. The opponents don't really have a, a response. 
And obviously he doesn't just TP if Camille's yeah. sitting right there, but... I, I like this one. They're gonna... Yeah, they're gonna Herald instead. Yeah, they they Herald, they get money for Yukal and Bono. And at the same time, they were putting on pressure for the Drake. They don't just run towards it, though. Nobody's making any rash decisions right now in terms of trying to force a Drake. On Fleek, though, is there is nearly going to get pillared on that corner, but he's able to run away on all fours. And now it looks like KT want to get in there. This time they're on vision. Fate is going back. He is heal currently. Oh, he's actually going to stay in the lane. Okay. See if they actually make a big play towards this dragon. Here they go. TF is making it in. Bono is committing to it. There is the smite, but he might go down as the burst damage is enough to take him out. But Gorilla, super squishy after losing the aftershock. Now on Fleek is as well. Smeb, though, has to get out. That's a nice stopwatch. But can they follow up after this? Smeb is going to go down. So on is able to get here. And oh, bait over the wall. He's going to bait. So on way out of position, and now KT, the rest of the team, is left out to dry. And so on can't even pick up the kill. That was a fantastic play by Fate to escape, as now Summit is looking for the play. But on fleek, a little bit slow on the jump, and yes, KT get the Drake, but Sandbox yeah, jumped Sandbox, ahead with the kills. Yeah, they, they come out very far ahead in this fight, and Summit is very big right now. He has two kills, two assists. He already has the Phage and the Sheen. I think he can recall, actually, into Trinity Force, maybe. Magical Boots complete as well. Fate manages to make his way up into top lane and get himself at least one more turret plate. So not the end of the world there. Let's take a look at how this team fight transpires. So Smeb is waiting 200 years to move out of the brush. And in doing so, is very delayed to do everything. These roots should have already grasped some of the other champions aiming, trying to lock up Root. And honestly, uh, Twisted Fate was still on, on cooldown. He could have just gone over to the right and then TF flashes away. So, so on. Also, some very questionable decision making with the Counter Strike. Really tunneling on. We had the. Now he's just coming out of that side as well. Everybody feeling pretty nice, but Sandbox more so after the last one. And yeah, I mean, no objectives now, but that's really going to catapult Sandbox in the lead. As we talked about, they have the comp that doesn't scale quite as much, so they do have to get these early leads and use that momentum to catapult them yeah. into a victory in the mid to late game at the latest. They're ahead 2k right now. Oh, two, almost two and a half, actually. Mm -hmm. Mountain Drake is giving some value over 2k TM. Curious, it does look like Ezreal's going to go Iceborne, so it'll give it even more value in that department. Yukal looking to run it down right now. Ghost and Cleanse locked in. Mm -hmm. New news here in spirit. Probably. Yeah. Well, maybe someday we'll get real new new. Who's it going to be? Faker? Maybe Cuz? We need someone to pick new new. It should happen. I mean, it should. he's pretty, you know, he's pretty decent. He's very good. He's I, very, I think, very good. I think it deserves a pick eventually. I don't know if that's going to be right now. There is not a lot of magic. Uh, resistance on the side of Sandbox, so the immediate Oblivion Orb here for you, Cal, is quite nice. Yeah. There's a lot of AD on the rest of his team, so this time around it, it feels good. Whether or not that's the way he was thinking and actually made that decision based on that is, uh, we're not 100% sure, but still it's going to be nice to see what he follows that up with. He wants to go Sork for the utmost damage, or does he want to grab something like Merc Treads to be a little bit safer? We'll have to wait and see what this Orianna player does. And it looks like Sandbox, they're gonna pick themselves up. First turret of the game, one minute until the Infernal, and so on is really struggling right now, so far. Here in this matchup, Summit doing a phenomenal job. So it does look like Summit showed up today, not Plummet or some Int. 
So pretty good for Sandbox because the Camille is going to be very important in the later stages, despite Jax obviously being the one that adds the clock. And Bono has caught up in EXP. He's level 10. On Fleek level 10 as well. 30 seconds until the Infernal. Does Jax have Blade of the Ruin King? Let's take a look as he recalls. And the answer is yes. Yeah. You would assume in that position right before the Infernal, he's going to no. back and... Okay, Infernal top, is in 10 seconds and he's running top lane. Yeah, I don't know about that. TP is... Morello completed two. It's like a minute away. Iceborne completed two. What is going on? Saw the immediate it, it, question yeah, mark it, on the jacks. Yeah, he's, yeah. From I, Sandbox, they're like, wait, now, what? The funny thing is, is a lot of people probably don't know this, but Summit's mic checks, he actually legitimately trash talks. Not, yeah. not the LCK <laughs> trash talk where they, like, compliment each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like, actually... <laughs> I, I remember the one mic check where before the, the fight started, I think it was even against Nuggery, he basically asked, what is this guy doing? Yeah. <laughs> before the 1v1 started. Yeah. And so they're going to forego the Infernal Dragon. They're losing a lot. I mean, they they decide yeah. to give up the Infernal. They're like, oh, let's trade for, for Shirley. And they don't even get her. They don't get the top turret. A little bit of farm is picked up by Sohan. He could have gotten that later. TP now available, but it doesn't matter. They can't make a play. So they give up both objectives. And yeah. what did they earn exactly? Not much. Well, they earned dirt damage onto their tier one mid turret. Great. Yeah. <laughs> they like the vintage look. I think Jax hit the top turret twice. Look at this. Hold on. They're trying to collect insurance. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Bono desperately smiting the Rift Herald. And Jax is just going to let the turret die. Now, intentionally letting it die, if you have the wherewithal to note a freeze in front of the top tier 2 would be really cool. Probably not what's going to happen, but a man can dream. Yeah, uh, not today. Uh, again, maybe in uh, LCK winter. Okay. Things freeze over. All right. And the LCK changes forever. Yukal's going to come up top and push as fast as humanly possible. He's got a hot date to get to. Take a look at the mini-map. Yeah, I, I, you know, I see those raptors are coming up soon. Maybe he's going to go in with his team and challenge the raptors. They're not going to eat themselves. Look, he's going. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Look. <laughs> Hell yeah, he's going to get down there. He's going to take the raptors, but his pushing wave will be interesting. And uh, Fate is going to go up and receive that serve and uh, hit it back here in the ping pong. So on is taking a lot of damage, but Summit is Ooh. all alone. As, okay, Fate comes in and finally they what go is... for an ult and now Smeb is totally oh. out of position. He has to flash. Oh There's man. Yukal. So now it's a 5v5, but they don't want to yeah. go straight into the Phalanx, so they back away. And that was a very questionable ultimate by Smeb, who somehow is ahead of Gorilla on EXP. I'm actually taking a look at the XP across the board. So Root is ahead of aiming. On Fleek did manage to get ahead of Bono again. And then Summit is ahead one level as well. So things are looking a little bit rough right now because the top lane did not end up going the way that one would have expected it to, given the Jax Camille matchup. And a lot of that is obviously, remember, so on, he missed so many minions in the first four waves. That hurt his recall, and then Summit getting a free recall off, coming back to lane, and then exerting a lot of control over. Very strong right now inside of the matchup. Also, Yukal stunting his build. He rushed Morello, but then they didn't team fight. And so now what happens is he's sitting on stopwatch. He's gonna allocate another 900 gold, another 1200. He's gonna get Fiendish Codex. He's gonna get Arm Guard, but he effectively already has Zhonya's. There, there's not a very big boost in power that he's magically getting on these components, and yet he's now gonna wait nine, 10 minutes until the fourth item completion comes in. So Orianna, effectively the same champion during the same time that Twisted Fate's gonna convert into a Lich Bane, Twisted Fate going to pick up his zeal, those are very different than what Oriana's getting. So things are a little bit rough for KT right now. 
Yeah, I mean, that's definitely one way to put it. The, this game hasn't been the cleanest from either side by any means, but KT are going to try to piece something together here. Aiming finishes off his Manamura, so maybe he can, with the red buff, begin to do some crazy oh, oh. hoax. That was a nice little ultimate from Yukal, but buffered the hook shot. Did summit, and he'll get away safely. And so what KT are trying to do right now is they're, they're hoping that Jax can eventually scale up and come online and be a monster. They finally pick up one of the turrets because a lot of the standing gold right now that is in Sandbox's favor is actually in the turrets. So mid, it, mid for both of these teams on its last, last leg, Root breathes on that turret, knocks it over. Yeah, it's kind of like the dragon breath yeah. fire coming out there from Infernum. Speaking of which, we have Infernal Drake, and I would hope that KT don't just donate it to yeah. uh, the Sandbox charity here in, in the second one. So Aiming does have Miramana online, and he does have the Vampire Scepter. So... And Red Buff. Is, and he has Red Buff. So this fight is going to be very important. So on even level two. Here we go. Oh, oh uh, they're just going to ult a stopwatch bait in a very... Wait, bait? Interesting spot. Uh, oh, oh. He's gonna flash away, and the Q is gonna miss. I don't know what I'm watching, LS. This is all over the place, both sides. And because Fate is essentially out of the fight, he doesn't have ult. He doesn't have TP. KT, you're just gonna take it, and Sandbox say, okay. Nothing we can do about this. Although Summit is still around, he's pinging his team. He's like, where are you guys going? We can fight. I have and they. <laughs> Don't go in with them. <laughs> that's, that's it. Okay. <laughs> Kek W. <laughs> oh, man. Well, they're just going to eat this wave that pushed in. Only one me melee minion was lost. But that Infernal Drake is huge for KT with their scaling comp. I mean, something we talk about all the time, and now they're only one away from Infernal Soul. Yeah, and the, the scary thing is that KT bought themselves a lot of time, too, to keep scaling up. If Sandbox had gotten the dragon, it's a very big spike for them because, again, Twisted Fate, hybrid usage for it because he auto attacks so much. Aphelios obviously loves it. They deny a lot of scaling. They don't put themselves on the clock. And so this was so this was so perplexing here. So aiming, Arcane shifted. And so Fate ends up actually getting away. They make their way over to the ba or the dragon, and because they have the low ground, which unlike Star Wars is actually advantageous, they end up picking up the dragon, and now they are in a fantastic spot. Now, interestingly, if there was a game for a Leandres on Ezreal, this would definitely be it. So, unfortunately, <laughs> we're not unfortunately, in, that's not gonna happen. Not in Europe. Yeah. So we're not going to get it, but there's so many HP stackers and the way that Ezreal conducts himself as well as the uh, build up to the fight. Here we go. Okay, Smeb is going to flash, but they're trying to burst him down here. He's quite tanky. So many ultimates being used for Smeb as he's going to try to sacrifice himself huh? for his team to win the fight. This is a questionable teleport coming in from Soan as he's just going to be focused oh, down. Oh, and it whiffed. Oh, he's not going to go down, actually. Here comes Summit over the wall, and now he's in imminent danger. What is going what on? What is happening? <laughs> <laughs> what am I watching? Why can't they just get any kills either? Like, nobody dies. It was only Maokai. Literally can't kill, living up to the names here. Now, I like <laughs> what Sandbox are doing. They know that they have the control war. Ah, well, they gave it away. So they have the control ward inside of the pit, and so KT doesn't know if they actually decide to go. That's why the blue trinket goes down. And so what they're trying to do is they're standing in the Baron Brush, and had they walked up a little bit more and walked back into the Baron Brush, they could have played around the vision, I believe, of the one ward that KT had. I might be wrong on that one. And maybe could have looked to get another pick, but definitely a very chocolate mess kind of a fight. And we're going to have to wait a little bit. Yeah, I want to see the replay. State <laughs> before the vanilla Don't you? Green. I mean, I just can't wait. Here we go. Break it down for us, LS. Yeah, so Pillar comes out, and it's very it's very perplexing because KT, they just bought themselves so much time. You have Jax down in bot lane, completely uncontested, who's just trying to farm. 
Sneb in no man's land. He goes back in with the Twisting Advance, but they could have actually just kept backing off. Oriana <laughs> had Shockwave, so she could have actually held that corridor and prevented Sandbox from going. Shockwave whips completely. Gorilla can't get a stun up. Summit goes over the wall, but no one else can follow. Gold card on Twisted Fate, but he doesn't have the teleport. Jinx and Kog'Maw available for Root, but not going to be able to do anything in the end, but just very bewildering. <laughs> True. KT should have just let Jack stay down in bottom. Why are they fighting before major item completions? Trinity Force finally coming in. Force so on. You almost have Zanya's on Orianna, which again, when you have the stopwatch, it's not really a completion. This is what I mean by a stuck item that ends up happening. So Twisted Fate has the Lich Bane. This sequence of events is playing out. Blade of the Ruin King now complete on Ezreal. We'll see if he does go into the Death's Dance. <laughs> As his next item, 50 seconds until the Infernal, what? though. What's up? <laughs> the dance. dance. <laughs> Every A is now ah. Uh, mana. It is mana. It is mana. <laughs> yeah, okay. Sure. Did I... I, I think <clears throat> I told Atlas. Uh, I talked to two different people uh, for linguists. <laughs> and some of, the, some of the names are very surprising. You know Varus? Yeah. Apparently Varus. Varus? Yeah, there's like a way to actually break down the name and the language of origin that it's derived from. Yeah, it's very, it's very interesting. That is pretty interesting. Yeah. Now I'm curious, like, what language is is Varus der like derived from? Like, where is that from? Ramus is Ramus. Ramus, <laughs> yeah, really? It's, yeah, it's something. It's real. real. Yeah. Ramus. Ramus or something. Yeah. It's I like that. Interesting. And here we go. Okay, so it's all about the Infernal oh, Soul. And they could just try to burst it and then get that power. Yeah. So this is what Sandbox needs to try to do to actually win the fight. Is try to do this guerrilla warfare. Oh, man, I feel... Okay, Dragon is honestly on Sandbox side. They should tap the Honey Fruit. They should tap oh. the Honey Fruit. Tap the... Yes. Yeah, nice, yes. Feb. <laughs> Thousand kill oh, Okay, Aphilios. Yeah, I Oh, this is scary. Now Dragon's pissed at Sandbox. Yeah. Well, oh, they're, oh, they're oh. trying to get on Summit here, and they might actually be able to, but the other members have to back away. They're trying to get the Steel Bottle not in there uh, on time, and Summit is able to back away. That's another Infernal Drake to Sandbox. And they shouldn't fight. They should not fight right now. They could lose the game if they fight. Look at the mini wave down and bottom. But also the next minion wave that's coming in, it would be in really close proximity with these death timers. A clean ace could result in the end of the game. So they're gonna back off. They really botched this. That was a that was that was a hot mess. I don't even. Yeah. That was something. That's all right. They're gonna back off. They're gonna reset. Sandbox did get a lot of value out of that infernal. The amp to the AD and AP ratios really can't be understated. And also, Locket, or Aegis, sorry, picked up for Summit. Death Dance, gonna be very, very soon here for Camille. And all that ends up really happening is Ezreal going Zanya, or maybe I'll pick up Guardian Angel. Yeah. I suppose. And now you can see the Zeal versus the items that Oriana has. So we were able to talk about this in 19 minutes. This is the sequence of events, and sometimes <laughs> This is, um... Sometimes we've, when you've seen it en enough times before, <laughs> hey, you know it's going to happen. Oh, Root! This is a really awkward spot, oh, but he is... Yeah. He has Cog and Draven. He's 2,000 years old, or 200 years. Maybe 2,000 years, I don't know. How, how far have we been in this game? They're going to take down the turret after that happens. And the ultimate from Gorilla goes away. Summit up a level, but so on is just catching he waves. Is. Yeah. Summit is almost 17. He's going to ding it very soon. Here comes Fate. I wonder if they're actually considering trying to dive Jax here. Looks like it, but... Oh, and Summit is going to... He's going to He's gonna feign weakness. He's going to take a oh, couple turret shots. They see Fate and... Yeah. Then they, they're like, They know about Fate. No. Yeah. So that's the problem. Okay. Cog and Caitlyn available for Root. And okay, so, so on. Respecting the Twisted Fate and the Camille. Yeah, imagine split pushing with these two champions. <laughs> <laughs> Simmer down here. Yeah. 
I'm, I'm still angry. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, they're using it really well. And it's always going to win in a 2v1 against the Jacks. If Sandbox can stop KT from taking any game-breaking objectives, like an Infernal Soul or a Baron or something like that, while they split push, it could be nice. It, a really interesting thing I actually want to talk about here is Root consumes the red buff right now, but there's nothing to force a fight. So I actually wonder if it would be a lot better to wait 30 seconds out until Infernal and then get the red buff on the Aphilios to really min-max. And I mean, the same thing goes for KT. So that, that would just be one very small thing that you could hyper min-max in order to really give well. yourself... Yeah, you may as well. I mean, th there's no downside to doing it. They're not going to steal it. <laughs> I mean, most likely. If True you Shot Barrage general... comes yeah. out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, the chances are extremely low as long as you have some wards down. The way that this game is going, no team is extremely far yeah. ahead. Rapid Fire is completed on Twisted Fate. And remember, he's cheating gold with his passive. And so, one minute until that Infernal... Does not look like Camille will actually reach the death stance, which is very big. Because it means that Jax oh. right now is gonna be very powerful. Ezreal is at a very scary point. Yeah. In this game right now. And so we'll see. They're just dancing over Baron. And this is what we we sort of stated would end up being the inevitable game state where Sandbox has to rely on Twisted Fate and Camille to really try to find some sort of a crack in KT's armor or rely on this very weird 1-3-1, but the problem is that Jax matches Camille very easily. And he should actually have been pushing her back, but because of the way that the whole game has transpired... Okay, now, Soan's doing the thing again where he's running top lane. Now, he does have teleport available, but that's not the point. You would rather have Jax immediately there in the fight. He's doing it because he's giving respect to Twisted Fate, and you can see he's planting down the wards. He wants to know whenever they try to group up together. And actually, Camille did get Death Dance. Yeah. So, oh, oh, here we go. Here we go. Oh, no, they can give up. They can give up top inhibitor, get infernal. Give yep. up top inhibitor, get infernal. But what about the... Are they just going to keep pushing? <laughs> they don't have teleport. Aiming has TP. No, aiming, aiming has TP. UCAL has TP. Fate yeah, has I, to get no, here, but they're not going to get here on time. No, it's, and they that's going to be it. The, the Infernal they just threw the game. is going to go to KT. There you go. Aiming in the front, but he's got stopwatch and a QSS at the ready. He's taking a lot of damage, though, from that front line, who is really tanky. Oh, Jax! Here comes Jax in the back line. Can he get on top of Rudy? Gets that stun, and there's the pillar, but 200 Aphelios! years! 200 years! Strikes again! And that's going to be the end of KT. Only UCAL remains as he was not in the fight. And Aphelios just stands up to three monsters in his face and wins. And that might indeed be. No, it's not. Now, Orianna, Shockwave should come up and Smeb's gonna be there too. Do they have a teleport to lock up turrets? No. So it really looked like they had just thrown the game because Infernal went over. KT could have just disengaged the fight backed off and everything would have been fine. Smeb's up now, Bono coming in 14. They're just gonna try to rush the turret. Oh, they're just rushing it down. They have the tankiness. They're gonna try to get in their faces and stun them. And they just gotta hit that Nexus, but they're also hitting UCAL. In goes Smeb, but he doesn't have enough damage. That's gonna be the end of the game. And Sandbox take it down after giving Infernal Soul with their split push and taking a big win with their Aphelios. 100 years. I mean, that is, that's the only explanation of that game. But the, the, <laughs> the, the other thing is, KT can back off and just go top and then wait for an actual 5v5 because Orianna is so integral to the actual team fight. So Sandbox, the, the top inhibitor play, you can understand why they're trying to do it. They're trying to create openings for themselves and KT blunder the follow-up decision-making. And really, I mean, this this really reminds me of Gen.G versus T1, game number one, mm. where it's just a steal right in front of your face. Yeah. That was, uh... <laughs> what a game. That was something. Yeah. That mid-game was... 
really messy, but it kind of yeah. led us to that explosive finish where um, we see the power of two, 200 years behind your back. I almost keep wanting to say 2,000 years just because I'm so impressed. And uh, we're just going to get to see it again. Well, let's take a look at this. So, Smab going in onto Root, Draven switches back into Jinx, gets right in the action, forces the defensive arcane ship. And you can see on Fleet gets so much HP back. So on coming in here. Now right here aiming. If everyone just runs away, they're out. They're out. Every single day of the week, they're out. They're gone. They go in on Aphilios and aiming can't get onto Root because Gorilla is body blocking all the Mystic shots. And eventually Fate comes in there, gold card, says Sayonara right at the very end. And that was, uh, there was there was definitely some, some stuff going on here. I ended up giving the MVP over to Summit because I think that his play was very important in keeping the Jacks down at so many points inside of the game, as well as winning out inside of the laning phase, helping open up a lot of possibilities in, in some yeah. of the team fights. And so, even though you could definitely give POG over to Aphilios, Root, yeah, you could. It's like giving it yeah. to a champion. Yeah, you know, like Root had a good game. He didn't yeah. make any mistakes. He was consistent, but he wasn't really the one that got them over the line in the early game and really pushed the game to that game state where they could take the win there towards the end. So right. I do. I do agree with you. I think Summit deserves it. One out in that lane, big time, and was able to put on the split push alongside Fate. But either way, guys, we're gonna have another commercial break when we come back. Game number two will be coming in with uh, Sandbox up against KT. Yeah. Sandbox taking that first game, and the, the Yamato Cannon power is coming in once again. We'll see if they can roll that into a second win. Oh, 